Hello, everybody. This is Bill McKibben from 350.org. I'm joining you virtually because I'm actually, for once in my home state of Vermont today, where we've just been having <clears throat> truly huge events to coincide with this Connect the Dots Day that 350 is running all around the world this weekend. Uh, the dots that we're connecting are between all the places that are already suffering the sting of climate change. So, the day began when the sun rose this morning in the Pacific with underwater demonstrations on the dying coral reefs, and it moved to Auckland, New Zealand as the sun went there and made a human seawall against the rising ocean, and then on to Australia where they commemorated the 173 people who died in the worst wildfires in Australia's history on the warmest day in the history of Melbourne a couple of years ago. And then on to places like India, where people talked about the incredible droughts now underway in places there, and Africa, where flooding is claiming all kinds of victims, and Pakistan and Afghanistan and Iran, and place after place after place where people recorded all the things that are happening as a result of the biggest thing human beings have ever done, our interference with the weather around us by raising the level of carbon in the atmosphere. I wrote the first book about global warming 23 years ago now, in 1989, a book called The End of Nature. And ever since, uh, I've watched as what the scientists have told us has not only come true, it's come true harder and faster than we thought. In the last few years, we've finally begun to organize to fight back. 350 is now uh, in operation in every country in the world except North Korea. And I hope very much that you will right this minute take out your cell phones and just uh, sign up at 350 so you can keep abreast of what we're doing. Some of it is this educational work like this weekend, um, um, a great day to put a human face on climate change, to take it from the very abstract to the very real. Some of what we do is more direct. Um, even, well, determined, I think would be the right word. Last fall, we organized the biggest civil disobedience action in the United States in 30 years. 1,253 people went to jail to protest the planned tar sands pipeline from uh, Canada to the Gulf of Mexico, uh, a pipe through which to export dirty oil to the rest of the world. Um, and so far, so far, we've been successful. The Obama administration has not approved that pipeline. They've denied the permit. Um, we don't know whether we'll be able to hold on to that victory or, or any other victory, but they're starting to come. Just yesterday, here in the state of Vermont, we became the first state in the union to ban fracking for oil and gas, and that movement is spreading fast. And around the world, the fight will begin on Thursday when Bernie Sanders introduces a bill in the Senate to strip oil and gas and coal companies of their subsidies, $10 billion a year. We can find better uses for $10 billion a year than giving it to Exxon. At least that's what we think. Um, this movement is up against the richest, most profitable enterprise that humans have ever engaged in. Exxon made more money last year than any company in the history of money. And that means that if we're going to fight it, we're not going to do it with money. We'll never raise enough. We have to find different currencies, passion, spirit, creativity. Sometimes we have to put our bodies on the line. And we've got to do it without knowing for sure that we're going to win. Um, we don't know that. There are scientists who think we've waited too long to get started. There are political scientists who think the odds are too high. There's too much money on the other side. But this movement is now engaged in action and in solidarity all over the world. So many of those places where people today took part, and boy, I hope you'll go look at the pictures at 350.org because they could not be more beautiful. So many of those places are places that have done nothing to cause this problem, but boy, are they feeling its sting. We so need you in Chicago to be a huge part of this. Yesterday in Chicago, the biggest climate denial front group, the biggest industry front group, uh, uh, trying to say that global warming isn't real, they put up a series of billboards in Chicago, and they linked 
people who care about the climate to mass murderers. They said Ted Kaczynski, the Unabomber, is worried about global warming. Are you? And the implication was clear. Only sick, twisted people would be worried about climate change. It's not uh, uh, citizens and scientists. It's serial killers. Well, our answer today and your answer there today is to show the world what environmentally minded, future minded, hopeful minded people look like. Not like Ted Kaczynski. They look like all of us. Now, all of us around the world look very different. Some of the pictures today were people wearing burkas. Some of them were Indian villagers. Some of them were Chinese peasants. Some of them were uh, Americans uh, and Canadians and Europeans. Some of them were indigenous people from Latin America, from Canada, from uh, the United States, from all over the world. Looked very different. They came from very different places and backgrounds. Some had caused this problem, some had merely suffered from it, but all of them united in a sense that we can still maybe make this future work, only if we work together. That's the thing to which we are called, and it is a great honor to get to work side by side with you on this going forward. Thank you so much. Take care.